Imagine this being a startup that is hosting a very good social media website for its users. In just a few months, this website got very popular and we tried expanding across other regions. And within no time, it spread out across the globe. And we were chilling out on the beach as if nothing would ever go wrong. But one fine day, half the data centers started to crash out and users started experiencing problems with the application. We had literally no idea what exactly went wrong because we had completely overlooked some of the most important parts of global deployment. And then we realized what if we had a proper logging mechanism and what if we could monitor what is going on and have a proper alerting mechanism in place which could help us get notified to act at the right time. And what if we had a service that could help us collect the data points, monitor them and help us act upon them automatically and which would let us analyze the data to avoid future disasters. And that is what we are going to discuss today. Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. This is the first video for 2021 and yes, we are going to start off with AWS CloudWatch and it's going to be a lengthy session. So sit back, relax and if you are ready, let's begin. And in today's session, we will be talking about CloudWatch, obviously, but along with that, we will try and understand what's the need for monitoring, logging and alerting. And we'll also check out some of the features of using CloudWatch and how does CloudWatch actually work. And we'll also get some hands on demo as well. And all the timelines are given in the description. So please check them out if you wish to skip or rewatch a specific topic. Now let's start. And before moving on with CloudWatch, let's understand the importance of having a proper mechanism in place which can help you in the time of crisis. When we design an application for an audience or demographic, we are not sure about how this application is going to make millions. So we just try and expand along the way the impact grows. And we might end up in situations that might cause problems for our users. And that's not always related to the thinking behind the design. Sometimes it may be because of the short sightedness that we have. Sometimes it can be because of the lack of budget or sometimes it could just be because we don't have the proper understanding of how things actually work. And when things are working fine, we never question the design or don't necessarily think about the problem we might face. And that's where the problem begins. In the microservice architecture, where you're dealing with not just one or two or 10 APIs, we might be working with 1000 APIs, which are working in tandem with each other. So that could be failures with related to API on the service, the authentication can fail, and that might be a situation where the CPU utilization and the memory consumptions make the application or server to crash. And when you don't have additional services to provide you the proper information for your team to debug issues, you are going to end up in problems that could affect you and your users in a very bad way. Previously, we have learned about the features that AWS provides us, such as auto scaling or resource scheduling or batching. But in order to take the decision on how much we can expand or scale depends on the state of the environment at a particular given point of time. For that, we need a service that can help us collect the data points or logs, which can help us monitor the current state or the state over a period of time and help us create action items to mitigate the issue. And the same way lets us analyze the data we have in order to avoid such issues in the future. And that's where CloudWatch comes into the picture. So now this is the right time for us to talk about CloudWatch. So when you think of CloudWatch, remember something very clearly. It is a service that you could actually ignore and it won't make any impact on the overall performance of your actual application but if not used properly and effectively would surely result in issues that you might have a hard time debugging and resolving. That's why it is called CloudWatch. Along with providing a feature set where you can actually send logs for the services that you're consuming using log streams and use its dashboards to create reports on the performance of your service, it can also help you analyze the data points to understand where your application could actually break. So as it is rightly mentioned here, CloudWatch collects monitoring and operational data in the form of logs, metrics and events and visualizes it using automated dashboards so you can get a unified view of your AWS resources, applications and services that run in AWS and on-premises. 
There are terms here that might confuse you a bit. But when in this situation, try and isolate what you did not understand. I'm sure you know what logs are and metrics. I'm not sure if you know about this or not. So, okay, so I'll tell you something about metrics. So just think about this. So if you invest $100 and you get 105 in return, you have a profit of $5. And if you get $95 in return, then you have loss of $5 because you have invested $100, isn't it? When it comes to AWS, if you have deployed a service on a T2.micro and the CPU utilization reaches to above 95% and you then try and make some changes and it shoots down to 75%, there will be a considerable amount of boost in the performance. That's called performance metrics. The way you measure and take a quantitative approach on a data point over a given period of time gives you a form of metrics based on which you can analyze the way your services are performing. So AWS CloudWatch is comprised of four pillars to provide visibility into your cloud resources and applications. And I might repeat them a few times. So please bear with me on that. So and the four pillars are collect, monitor, act and analyze. So the basic idea of using CloudWatch is to send logs to the resources you're working with, which may be service logs, application logs, load balancer logs, or as default service logs, instance log, or any other form of logs that you wish to send using the CloudWatch agent. Yes, obviously with resources like EC2, Lambda, and S3, this is most commonly used. And when it comes to monitoring, you can make use of the CloudWatch dashboard and create awesome visualizations and alerts for the change in the data points that you have. And that works cross region as well. And the third one, ACT, is the most interesting part because based on the data insight that you have, you can create events that trigger resources to achieve allocations and meet the demands of your application, like EC2 or container auto scaling using CloudWatch events. And with CloudWatch, you can analyze data over a short or a long period of time with up to one second and that too in real time. These four pillars that you have here help you in application monitoring, system-wide visibility, resource optimization, and unified operational health. And this is just the tip of the iceberg. CloudWatch is much more when you use it effectively. Don't worry about some of these terms here. We will talk about them shortly. So no matter what kind of application you're working with or what region it belongs to, you get the facility to create log streams and send application and resource logs to CloudWatch so that you can analyze the metrics and logs and so that you can act quickly to resolve the issues. So if you see these applications, they are mostly related to real-time data and applications like these are critical to run all the time and cannot afford to have a downtime. So business critical applications needs a data set and real-time analysis to ensure that the application has very little downtime. And as a solutions architect, it's your job to ensure that you have this in place. You already know what application monitoring is. So when it comes to system-wide visibility, you may have applications hosted at AWS Cloud or on-premises. You can't ignore a few resources or services just because you don't like them. Or if you're working on a multi-tier application, you cannot ignore the database because you are just storing data there. That's not going to work. With CloudWatch, you get the exposure to monitor and get data about all the tiers of the application that you have so that you won't miss out on anything. And let's talk about resource optimization to auto scale instances when there is a peak CPU utilization of over 95%. You choose trigger events so that you could increase the number of instances you want and reduce when the CPU utilization decreases or reduces. And these things actually help the system to have unified operational health by making sure you have the alerts and notification in place based on the events that you wish to trigger. You know what, if suppose you have a trigger and you have created an alert, you can send a notification to the SNS topic and you can get notified on your phone or email as well. And that's the overall picture. So as I told you before, and I repeat myself once again, when you think of implementing CloudWatch, think of these four pillars, collect, monitor, act, and analyze. Now let's move ahead with your favorite part, the working of AWS CloudWatch. So when we think about how does CloudWatch work, the first thing that you should remind yourself is that it's nothing but a metrics repository. So when we have services in AWS that have metrics, if you want, you can also create your own metrics. You can also do that using the put metrics data on CloudWatch. 
So remember, you can also create your own metrics in CloudWatch. So the basic idea here is that if I want to judge the current state of an instance or resource, I need a benchmark, isn't it? For example, if I tell you, if the CPU utilization of the instance goes above 85%, then I want to scale a new resource. So what you will say then? Then my benchmark is CPU utilization and the threshold value that I have here is 85%, isn't it? Because if the CPU utilization of the instance goes above 85%, then I want to scale a new resource. So 85% becomes the threshold and the benchmark on which I'm trying to judge the resource state is CPU utilization. So remember that. So if I have a matrix called CPU utilization and I send log streams that point to that matrix for it to keep track of the current state of the instance, I can create an alarm using that matrix and measure it or judge it based on if that has reached 85% or not because that will be my threshold value. So using that matrix of CPU utilization, I can put a threshold value there and I can create an alarm state using that particular threshold value in that particular matrix. And one more very important thing to remember is these matrix that you are creating right now are regionally scoped, but you can use CloudWatch cross region stats functionality to get them in a single place. And I can write a condition that if it does, use the auto scaling policy to spin up a new instance. And I can further enhance it as well as send notifications to users using the SNS topic or perform any operation we need. And that's what we see here. So we have the services which are being connected to CloudWatch for metrics and log push. We have the CloudWatch alarm, which makes use of the metrics to scale instances using the auto scaling group. And SNS here helps to send out the messages or notification. When I show this to you, you will be able to relate to it in a way that might help you visualize how things actually work. So this is basically your overall picture. So you can see the collect part here. You can see the monitor part here. You can see where we are actually acting upon the particular event that we have and we are how we are actually trying to analyze the resources that we have here. So this is the overall picture and nothing more, but we still have a few more concepts to cover because you know, right? You learn once and never forget, hopefully, isn't it? So now let's understand more about alarms and events. So now let's take another example here because you guys love real time examples, isn't it? So the biggest thing right now for gamers is that to get their hands on a PlayStation 5. This is a real world hypothesis. Let us assume that this is the case my friend wants to get one as well. So what I did was I wrote a Lambda function to fetch the records of the currently available stock. This is just an example. Don't do this. You'll be banned. And what I did is I created a matrix which keeps account of the HTTP status code of 200. And I have created an alarm using the same. And I have kept the condition that if the threshold count is at five or more, send the notification to the user. So whenever I call the Lambda function, it will fetch the information from the website about the count of the current stock that I have. And once the HTTP status code is 200, it will send the metrics data and carry out the cycle. But what if I wanted this to be scheduled? So what I did was I added a CloudWatch event. So CloudWatch event time based that triggers the Lambda function every one minute. With CloudWatch events, I get the feature where I can create a scheduled event and point that event to a target that is here, my Lambda function, isn't it? That's very clear. In that way, I can just sit back and get notified whenever the PlayStation 5 is in stock and my friend as well. So as you can see here, the CloudWatch event that you have delivers a near real time stream of system events that describe the change in AWS resources. So that is what it is trying to tell. So when the time based CloudWatch event is triggered every one minute, it is trying to invoke the target here. And the alarm actually performs one or more actions based on the value of the metric or expression relative to the threshold over a number of time periods. So the threshold value is five here. So whenever it is reached, it is trying to send out the notification. So CloudWatch alarms, as we have discussed before, you will be aware that CloudWatch alarms can help you automatically initiate actions on your behalf based on the metrics that you have. And it keeps focusing on a single metric and keeps track of the change in the behavior of your resources over a period of time, like five minutes, 10 minutes, one hour, four hour, one day, and it's up to 15 months. Okay. So it can keep track of your metrics up to that long. 
And when we create an alarm, we need to think of three settings. The first one is period, which indicates the single frame of time, which could be in seconds or minutes. That is based on your time period, based on which we evaluate the metric. Next is evaluation period. So this is basic. It's your evaluation period. That is the most recent period used to determine the state of the alarm. The third one is the data point to alarm. This is the number of time frames or data points which must be breaching the threshold for the alarm to go to the alarm state. Don't worry about this. I'll explain you this with an example. So just think about these three settings right now. Okay, let's take this example and let's understand how to read this. So let's suppose we have the evaluation interval of three seconds and the data point to alarm is also three. So what it means is that if we have three data points that are breaching the threshold, the alarm will go to the alarming state. So this is your threshold value that you have, the line in the blue that you see here. And this is the exact value that is the current state of the resource. So it started off from one and it has taken a peak and it has crossed the threshold value here. That is in between two and three, isn't it? So once it has crossed, it has reached the fourth unit. But the threshold value that we have set is three. But now it has already breached. So there actually begins the data points to alarm. So from three, we start counting how many number of points has been breached. So this is one, this is the second one, and this is the third one. And clearly we have a breach of three data points. So now this will be a placeholder for which the alarms will be triggered. So as you can see here, after three periods over threshold, an action is invoked because it has crossed the threshold value and it has invoked or it has crossed three data points, three, four, five, and it has crossed three time periods as well. So now after three points, what happened? It has reduced below the threshold value and now it has gone from six to seven, but it has not breached the threshold value here as well. So now if you see it has peaked to 5.5, but it actually drastically reduced to two and then to one or zero here. So this is only one period over threshold, so no action is invoked. So what it means is like if you have a threshold value of three and you have kept a matrix or the alarm state to be like, okay, let the resource breach or let the resource cross three units. I don't have a problem. But if suppose it crosses three for three consecutive seconds. So if you see here, one, two, three, three consecutive seconds or data points then only I'll consider it as a breach and then only I'll consider them as the data points to alarm and I will take an action on that. So imagine you're playing Call of Duty. Okay. So here what happens when you get hit and you take cover, your health actually regenerates, isn't it? So let's suppose the game has been programmed that if the person gets hit three times consecutively, then he will die. Otherwise, he will be able to recover. So if you get hit once, and you go into cover, you will be recovered to the full state of health. That is 100%. But if you run out of luck and you get hit three times consecutively, you die, isn't it? That's where the action actually is being invoked. So that's what the health percentage or the data points to alarm actually relates to. So that's how the alarm actually works. And when you get this chart or this diagram, and if you want to analyze it, you have to just consider the threshold and the value and you have to consider what is the evaluation period that you have and what is the data points to alarm because these two things are very much important when you're trying to read or evaluate an alarm and there are three states of the alarm the first one is in alarm which happens when the matrix or expression is outside of the defined threshold so if you have a threshold of five unit and it matches the data point to alarm then it moves to the alarming state that is when the action is supposed to take place the second one is okay. It means everything is okay and the matrix is within the threshold value. And the third one is insufficient data. So let's suppose the data points are not available yet or there is no sufficient data to project for the alarm. So in that case, you get the insufficient data. So when you're working on alarms, please keep an eye on these states. So these are some of the concepts that we need to understand while using CloudWatch. So we have namespace, metrics, events and alarms. So we have already discussed mostly three of them. So the next one that is actually left is namespace. So let's try and understand that. So now let's understand another concept that is namespace. 
So when it comes to namespace, you must be aware that a namespace is a placeholder to uniquely identify a group of objects. In CloudWatch as well, it is just a container for the metrics based on which we can create bifurcations between other groups of matrices. So when you create a custom matrix, you create a namespace for the matrix data. So there are namespaces that are used by a lot of AWS services as well. For example, EC2 uses AWS slash EC2 or AWS slash EC2 spot. So let's suppose you want to create one for your application. You can create one like you can create one like giving the name of the service that you have. And there is a naming convention that you should follow. So you can check that out in the documentation. But you have to remember that to avoid conflicts with the AWS service namespace, you should not specify a namespace that begins with AWS slash service name. And these are all the services which have the namespaces scoped in AWS. So, so these are already listed in the documentation. You can check the namespaces which are already there. So before creating any metrics, if you want to use the existing namespace, then you can use them. Or if you want, you can create one for yourself. So these are all the ones that we have. We have already covered most of the services, but there are a lot of services in AWS. Man, this is crazy. But don't be worried about this. Let's move on. So now let's check the example of how we manage auto scaling for EC2 with CloudWatch. So the requirement for this design is that if the CPU utilization for an instance goes above 90%, we need to add another instance using auto scaling groups and the policy. If it reduces below 40%, then we need to scale down the instances. Simple, isn't it? So this is a simple requirement. When the CPU utilization goes above 90%, we need to scale it up. And if it goes below 40%, then we need to scale it down. So let's start. So we have the user and who is using the services that we have as a part of our AWS cloud infra. We have our load balancer, which is connected to the instances with our auto scaling group in place. In order to achieve the metric auto scaling, we need to use the EC2 CPU utilization metrics and create the CloudWatch alarm with the threshold of 90%. And for that, we have our instances with CloudWatch agents already installed to capture the information and send the real time data stream for analysis to the metrics. Once the metrics value reaches 90%, we send the alarm to trigger the auto scaling group, which in turn scales the instances for us and downscales it when it's not needed. So that's how we can design our applications to ensure that we don't encounter any failures for our users. So as you can see, I'll repeat this once again. So we have our users who are using the application or the service that we have as a part of our AWS cloud infrastructure. We have our load balancer, which is connected to the instances with a auto scaling group in place. In order to achieve the metrics auto scaling, we need to use the EC2 CPU utilization metrics and create the CloudWatch alarm with the threshold of 90%. And for that, we have our instances with CloudWatch agents already installed to capture the information and send the real time data stream for analysis to the metric. So once the metric value reaches 90%, we send the alarm to trigger the auto scaling group and which in turn scales the instances for us. So as you can see, the red dots that are visible to you, they are actually the data points that we have. They are being sent to CloudWatch based on which we are triggering the alarm. So that's how we can design our applications to ensure we don't encounter any failures for our users. I want to repeat this once again. So this is very simple, but it is very effective while you're trying to make use of this. Most of the times we don't make use of these CloudWatch alarms and uh, CloudWatch logs and events and matrices very effectively. And thus we are not able to get the real uh, fruit out of it. That's what I wanted to help you understand here. And there might be a few concepts that might not be clear to you. And there are a lot of things that we can discuss about CloudWatch, but it is not that appropriate right now at this point of time. But if you still have any more doubts or any problems that you are facing right now with CloudWatch, then you can just put them in the comment section below so we can have another separate discussion on this. So I think this was a really long session on CloudWatch and we have discussed a lot on the concepts itself. And I have decided to make a separate video on CloudWatch for the demo part which i'll be uploading it in a short time so please make sure that you watch that as well and that was a very interesting session i really enjoyed it and if you did as well then please make sure you subscribe to the channel comment on what you liked what you didn't like the video if you felt it was worth it and follow me on instagram so that we can be friends i would love that and all the links to support the channel are given here in the description so please make sure you check them out it really helps the channel grow. So happy new year once again, and I wish you all the success in life. Stay safe, stay healthy, 
So I hope to see you next time, same place, here with another session on AWS. Until next time, it's Pythaholic, signing off.